Hey, what's up y'all? It's Ryan here again, and I'm back with a new drum plugin today. This one specifically is the Fotis Bernardo drums from Stigmatize Productions. Now, Stigmatize reached out to me recently and sent over this drum plugin so that I could check it out for y'all, and I honestly fell in love with it because I had heard of Fotis Bernardo a few times in the past, and I've heard of the bands that he's in and has been in quite a bit. So for those of you that don't know, Fotis Bernardo is an insane metal drummer, and he's played with some pretty well-known bands like Septic Flesh, Nightfall, Necromantia, Night Rage, and Chaos Star, but he's currently drumming for Nightfall. He's also the frontman for Six for Nine, and an incredible producer over at Deva Sound Studios, where he works with bands like Rotting Christ and Septic Flesh. What's important to know here is that Fotis sampled every drum hit that you hear in this drum library, and spoiler alert, there's a lot in this drum library. Over 14 gigs of samples, actually, which is insane, and I'll go into detail later about why this sample library is so large, but before we do, let's go ahead and jump into a demo song so you can hear these drums in the context of a full demo mix. So now that you've heard the drums in the context of a demo mix, let's go ahead and jump into Logic Pro so I can show you how I use these. Now when you open up the Fotis Bernardo drums for the first time, this is the window that you're going to be presented with, and this is what you would expect from most drum plugins, right? As far as seeing the drum set itself so you can see which pieces you're about to be using. But what's cool about this interface is that right here off to the side you have some of the quick little edit and mix tools that you might need to make on the fly when you're writing. Such as the velocity and tuning of the drum that you're using, so for instance if I click on the kick, I can then change the settings for the kick drum. If I click on the snare, it then changes to the snare so I can change those settings really quickly as well without having to go into the mixer and the settings. This is extremely useful for moving quickly through the plugin, something I really enjoy about the interface on this specifically. Now also on this initial page, when you do click on one of these drums, so I just clicked on the snare, you'll notice down here below I have the different snares that I can choose from, right? So these different snare samples will come in the pre-mixed and ready to go, but you'll also notice the raw unprocessed ones are available as well. So if you do want to use unprocessed so you can do all the mixing and editing yourself, you have that option there, which is extremely useful. And you can audition them just by clicking on one and then clicking on one of the snare drums down here. So if I click on the pearl drum, now I've got the pearl snare. If I want to go back to the Mapex, now I'm back to the Mapex. If I want to change the tuning of that, maybe I want it a little bit higher, so I can raise that up a little bit. So you can see how easy it is to change the tuning there. And this helps to give you even more variety to make your drum mix stand out from everybody else's. Something I just have to point out here because I can't get over how good they sound are the toms. There's a lot of drum libraries with subpar tom samples in them. And I mean a lot. A lot of people just don't sample the toms properly or just sample bad toms to begin with, but these ones just sound ridiculously good. Especially those floor toms. Listen to those again. The floor toms just sound so good. And again, this is one of those things that I'm always looking for better tom samples because I've had to do a lot of Franken kit setups before with the different drum libraries that I've used to get good sounding toms with a great sounding snare and a great sounding kick. So I really love how Fotis Bernardo drums has a ridiculous sounding set of toms already built in and I didn't feel the need to change those out for anything. Now, if we go over to the mixer here, you'll notice that there's a lot of stuff going on here, right? And for good reason. One, yes, you can work with the unprocessed versions of each of these drum samples. But if you want to work with the pre-mixed and work within the plugin itself, it's extremely easy to do so. This plugin is very adept. It is able to use up to 32 stereo outputs inside of your DAW so that you can separate each of these tracks within like Logic Pro like I am for instance. Or you can work within the plugin itself and make your life easier and make it easier on your computer as well because it won't be using nearly as much CPU power to just be using one plugin rather than separating out 32 different tracks for instance and having different EQs, compression, and who knows what other plugins on those other tracks. This makes it all available in one plugin and the way that it works is really simple. So if I click on the kick track here and I go down below to the FX selector. I have EQ, I have the transient designer, I have saturation and compression, and then I have reverb. Right now I've left these mostly alone, but if I click on EQ for instance, I've gone ahead and messed with the low cut and the high cuts on here just because I wanted to make sure that I'm having my kick sitting just below the bass in the mix. So again, it's really nice to have this built in. I could add Logic's stock EQ to the kick track if I wanted to separate all these out, but why bother when I have each individual drum piece and track having its own EQ section? That's extremely useful. 
If I go into the transient designer, same thing. I do have that turned on to the basic settings that they already had for this preset. Saturation and compression is actually turned off for the kick and reverb is turned on. If I go over to the snare, you'll notice the same. I have reverb turned on, saturation and comp is turned off because I, I love how it sounded already. Transient designer, I did pop on. And then as far as EQ goes, I left that very, very standard settings here. So these are things that you can go in and change. You don't have to. This sounds extremely mix ready as it is. Let's go ahead and take a listen. So you can hear already, that's as is. I haven't done anything. I've left these settings pretty much the same. The only thing I did was that that cut on the kick a little bit to cut some of the super low frequencies out, which if you're not listening right now through headphones, you're not gonna hear that stuff anyways. You won't hear it through a phone screen or laptop speakers or anything, but it's nice to have all of these adjustments right here inside of the plugin. If I scroll over, you'll notice that we have overheads, room, bleed. The bleed track is kind of cool. Let me solo that so you can hear. So really faint, right? It's actually the noise that you would hear from bleed from the close mics on a snare drum or on a hi-hat or on the toms, for instance, and it's blending those together so that way you get that bleed and you get that more natural sound, which is a really cool attention to detail kind of aspect of this plugin. Now this over here, I want to point out, the cross stick has its own track in here, and that's extremely useful for myriad reasons, but for me, it's because the cross stick is one of those things that usually you'd have to go in and automate that in so that way you can hear it properly and you can compress it properly. But since it has its own track within this plugin, you don't have to worry about that. If you have any sections of your song that has a cross stick section, you'll be able to mix that by itself right here in the plugin without having to export that separately and automate or do anything with it. So that's again, one of those little attention to detail things that's gonna make your life a whole lot easier when you wanna get a great mix. So along with all of the main mixer settings in here, there's another really cool feature that I found extremely useful. So if you click on mixer selector up here and you choose mic mixer, this then allows you to choose from the different microphones that were available when these drums were sampled. And this is pretty cool because you can get completely unique sounds based on the mics that you choose. So from within the mic selector window, we can choose, let's say for instance, the kick and we'll click on solo for the direct mic of the kick. And that's all we're going to hear now. And then if we unsolo that, maybe go solo the overheads, we'll just hear the kick in the overheads. And then the room. So on and so forth, you get it, right? So when it comes to the usefulness of this though, is I can then choose the blend for the kick in these mics specifically. And so if I want less of the kick in the overheads, I can bring down the overheads. If I want more of the kick in the overheads, I can bring the overheads up. So on and so forth for the room. If we go over to the snare, there's even more. So we have the snare top and we have the snare bottom. Maybe you don't like as much of the snare bottom mic in your snare tone. Well, then you can just pull down your snare bottom mic inside of this mix, which gives you so much control, again, all within this plugin. If you were to have all of these faders and different mixers inside of your DAW, it would get kind of confusing for a lot of people. And a lot of people, myself included, might get overwhelmed and inundated with too many choices. So it's nice to have it throughout the different menus within this plugin because it really gives you a logical way to kind of separate everything while still working on it all at the same time, if that makes sense. Because you work on these things at different levels so that way you're not seeing everything at once and getting overwhelmed and not knowing what to do. So if we go back to the main mixer, this is the main levels in EQ, compression, and all of that. And then if we go back to the mic mixer, we then have all of the different mics for all of the different pieces that we can then blend to our taste, which makes this an extremely versatile plugin, to be honest with you. I'm sure there's other plugins that have something similar, but I haven't seen anything this easy to use and it's something I'm actually really grateful for because I'm not the greatest mixer. I'm still learning just like everybody else that's probably watching this right now. And this is seriously helping me to learn how to mix drums better. And then lastly, the master track over here. So you have obviously your master volume fader. You also have a limiter built in, which is nice because you don't need to throw L1 or anything on your drum bus if you don't want to. This has that built right in. And it works ridiculously well. Like I I didn't have any issues with clipping or anything here, so I'm very thankful for that being on there. If we go to the next section here, which is the settings, you'll notice that you have your velocity editor and then you have your velocity range. Again, you can do this on the piano roll, which I have open behind here, but it's really nice to have that ability straight within the plugin. It really just simplifies the workflow when it comes down to it. Something I'm noticing is that Photos Bernardo drums wasn't just made so that a drummer could make great drum tracks, right? This was also made for the guitarist in mind and the songwriter in mind that needs to have a faster workflow to get back to writing the song. And so you have all of these really awesome convenience features like all of the velocity editors available right here, but also even just from the main page, you have your velocity for each individual piece that you can edit as well as down here with the drum mapping because if, if you ever had any other MIDI that you'd been using from other drum libraries from like a past song that you had written, for instance, you'd be able to immediately change this drum mapping to any one of these very many different drum maps that they've got in here, making this a very invaluable tool to be able to take all of those old sessions or even new sessions that you wrote with different drums and immediately import their MIDI and use it with Photos Bernardo drums. 
that's pretty huge. I mean, I was actually paying for a different plugin before to do that with other drum libraries. And with Fotis Bernardo drums, I don't have to use that plugin. And that's pretty huge for me because that's saving me time. It's also saving me money. Now, speaking of all the MIDI grooves, if we then go down here where it says grooves, you're gonna notice there's a lot in here. In fact, there's over 4,000 inside of this at this point. And they span between a couple of different genres. So you have hardcore punk, you have metal, you have pop and you have rock. And then there's also some metal songs. So full songs MIDI inside of there, which is honestly pretty awesome. So if you're a guitarist, you wanna jam along to those songs, or if you wanna do a cover of those songs, You've got those with the full correct drums already transcribed into MIDI for you, which is pretty awesome. The way that I use this though, so you'll notice up here in Logic, I have quite a few of these drum loops already. The way that I use this is I would go ahead and go into one of the styles here. So let's go into the 200, the 220 to 300 intense, and then let's go ahead and go to, uh, let's go power hand, hi hat, loose, and then let's go ahead and just click on the first one here and hit play. All right, so you heard the drum groove there, right? Now I can go ahead and edit this drum groove if I want to. I can add some swing to it. I can make the velocity go from just normal to all the way at 100, or I can go to super soft if I want to. So again, that's one of those convenience features, being able to edit that stuff right here within the plugin and not have to go into the piano roll to do it. So let's go ahead and listen to what the swing does here. So you can hear how I edited the swing there and gave it a little bit more humanized aspect to it and honestly a whole different feel to it. So once we've decided that we like this drum loop, you'll notice right here next to the play button that I've been pushing, it says the same name of that MIDI groove that I was using. And so I can click that and I can actually drag it up into my MIDI editor. So once it's dropped inside of there, I can then hit play. And not only can I hit play, as you'll see here on the piano roll, I can now go ahead and edit that MIDI as much as I want to. So that MIDI is freely available to me to do whatever I need to or whatever I want to with it. But what's cool is you'll notice all of these velocities are really well humanized, so it's not gonna sound like a machine gun effect. Which again, is a huge time saver. That's something that does take a very long time if you were to go and do it yourself and not just have Logic do the uh, randomized velocity, which can sound good, but it doesn't take into account how a drummer plays. So, cause a drummer doesn't play with random velocity. They have intention behind those hits, right? And these velocity changes were done with intention so that it sounds like a drummer is actually playing these. Now with 4,000 of these MIDI grooves to choose from, you're really not gonna run out of different grooves to write to anytime soon. But as I covered earlier, if you do end up not wanting to use some of the grooves that are inside of this plugin already, remember that on the settings page, you're able to actually use any drum map that you want to. So you can take MIDI grooves that you might have had from Superior Drummer or from Easy Drummer or any MIDI grooves that you've gotten online in the past because they're most likely compatible with one of these drum plugins and you can immediately just change this plugin's mapping to that mapping and you'll be good to go. So the options are pretty much endless as far as writing with MIDI grooves, which is how I prefer to write drums most of the time, at least when I'm trying to get something down for a riff that I'm writing. And I don't always have the time to program a groove myself right then and there. I usually do for the final song, but for this one, I didn't. I used the pre-written MIDI grooves that were included inside of this drum plugin and it worked out extremely well for me. Even the fills I was able to use by just dragging one of those fills in and I drop it in right at the end of one of these and it adds it as a fill. So now we have versus before we had it's really easy, kind of just drag and drop. You listen to the MIDI grooves, find the one that you want, drag it into the session, and then your session automatically plays it at the tempo that your session is in. It really can't get much easier than that, to be honest with you. So at the end of the day, the Fotis Bernardo drums is easily becoming one of my favorite drum plugins to use because of how easy it is to use, just how many features it has. I mean, again, we went over that it had 14 gigs of samples in it that you can also use with Steven Slate drums, which is a really great added bonus for anybody that wants to do sample replacement on other tracks. You have over 4,000 MIDI grooves, so you can write all day long and literally not run out of MIDI grooves with multiple different styles and so many different presets of the drums to change the drum tones and sounds to fit the vibe of the song or the track that you're writing. And you're able to change the MIDI drum mapping to so many different types of drum maps that allows you to work with old MIDI that you've had from years past, as well as work with the MIDI grooves from other drum plugins that you might've written something in or might've found online. All of this adds up to just an extremely versatile drum plugin that you can throw on at any time, do all of your mixing right inside of the box and not have to worry about adding a ton of other plugins to your DAW session, maxing out your CPU's resources. That way you can still keep your eye on the prize, which is writing the song. So I hope you all like this. I'm really thankful that Stigmatize Productions sent out this plugin for me to try out because I'm enjoying the hell out of it at this point. If you all enjoyed this video, please consider liking and subscribing. It would really help me out. And if you want to pick up this plugin, I do have the link down in the description below. It would really help me out if you picked it up at that link. And lastly, if you have any questions, feel free to leave those in the comments. I'd like to hear what you all think about this plugin as well. And yeah, that's about it. I guess I'll talk to you all soon. Peace.